Heavenly Father, I come to you thanking you for your goodness, thanking you for your love, thanking you for your kindness and your mercy upon us. You know, like the song, prune to wander, Father. Prune to leave the God I love. Help us, Father, to be faithful in the little. Faithful in the little. Lord, bless this offering and bless this congregation. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please.
grace that transforms, grace that gives us power to overcome sin. So Lord God, we humbly seek you. You have told us that we need to do just this, to love mercy and to walk humbly with you always. Lord dear God, we ask spiritual blessing, healing for your people. Spiritual healing because we are all short and we need that by your the guidance and help of the Holy Spirit by your word. But we need to study your word. Study them that we may be rooted and grounded in love. And we comprehend with all the saints your word. And we can be holy as you are holy. Father God, again, we have some blessing for our physical. Everyone needs this. Our physical bodies need to be healed also. Because we are living in this world with so much deception, so much destroying power of Satan. But we praise you, God. For oh, you are our Elohim, you are our Yahweh, you are our Adonai. So, with you, your God, we are saved. Oh, dear God, again, we ask your help in our financial. So, we ask your blessing for this because you want us to go to the world to preach the gospel, to preach the good news to every people. So dear God, again, you have chosen us as a special people, a remnant people in our day, that we need to move forward and we need to do this because time is coming, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So dear God again, help each one of us to be fair. Preparation is so important. That's why the Lord Jesus reminded us that we need to watch and pray. The Spirit needs the Spirit, but the flesh is weak. We need to watch our words. We need to watch our action. We need to watch our temper. And we need to watch our heart. So we need to pray with perseverance. We need to pray with reverence. We need to pray again and again. And we need to pray with yearning in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God for Jesus Christ this morning. Anybody have an amen for Jesus? Amen. Praise the Lord, family, this morning. 
Do you know, did you hear those words? Sometimes we're singing the song and, we, and the, the words go right over our head like water off a duck's back. In the light of his glory and grace. Glory and grace together. That is why you and I stand here today breathing the breath of God because of his glory and his grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. We have to remember who our creator is. If you miss Sabbath school, you miss some good discussion about creator. And God who spoke light out of darkness made his light to shine in our hearts. Right? 2 Corinthians 4, 6, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God where family in the face of Jesus there has to be the face of Jesus if there's anything we must remember in the year 2022 it's the face of Jesus we cannot forget who our Creator is we will remember the Sabbath day and we forget Jesus. It's essential that you and I know the Lord of the Sabbath. And so this morning as we think about that glory and that grace, thus saith the Lord, he who created you, Jacob, and who formed you, Israel. Amen? Amen. Those are two names of one and the same man. Amen? Jacob, who was name means what? Deceiver. And Israel, the new name God gave Jacob. Because you and I were created in the image of God. But that image, that image has been marred. It has been devastated. It has been almost destroyed from this planet. But not so because of the face of Jesus Christ, you see. He says, do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. We're talking about grace, the glorious grace of our creator for this planet, this people. Oh, wait, for Michelle Seibel, this person. It should bring tears to our eyes every day when we think about what God has done for us. We of all people should be running across these, this aina of ours, sharing the good news of glory and grace. Family, it's our Jesus today. Does our Father really love us? Yes. He does. Yes. Does the Spirit move among us? Yes. He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those he loves? He does. He does. This morning, as we go into the Word of God, and I think it was Mike who was sharing in Sabbath school about the powerful Word. You know, I've been having a Bible study with my grandees. I have eight Six live on Oahu, two live in Alaska right now. And the Lord just impressed me at the end of last year, Michelle, we need to gather these children during these times. when Do you wonder what the kids are thinking? Family, do you wonder what our children are thinking? We better start wondering what the kids are thinking. And we need to gather those children in the Word and in prayer, and in love, and acceptance, and inclusion, and tell them the story of Jesus. Powerfully does the Lord want to do something new in his church. Amen? Amen. And our children are a vital part of that today. And as I've been meeting with my grandies once a week, for, we call it Bible Poe, Poe in Hawaiian gang. It's the Bible gang. They're coming after school. They're coming to Tutu and Papa's house. They're coming to eat, right? Yes. They've already been at school all day. Are they coming to study? No. So I don't call it Bible study. It's a gang. 
And these are what the kids say. We begin in John 1, chapter 1. And the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and lived and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, full of grace, full of truth. And the question comes from my granddaughter, what is word? I have seven grandsons and one granddaughter. What is word? And now I can tell you, family, as we've met since the end, the last Thursday of 2021, every week now into April, we have changed the question. The question is not what is word, it is who is word. And the other questions have risen up. Is God real? Yes. Is God love? Does God really care? Is love the most important thing? And the Spirit moves among us to seal in the hearts of these children the church of God. Praise God for Jesus Christ this morning. We're going to be in Luke chapter 18. It starts off in verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Luke 18, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Grant me justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her just by her continual coming with wearying me. Then the Lord said, listen to this family, then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect to cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith? on the earth. First of all, we have to understand who is speaking here. It says, then the Lord told them a parable. This is word speaking, amen? amen. This is word. That's what makes this so powerful. This is not human words. This is God word. Word is speaking. The word that comes from this God man is spirit and life. It's living and active. Something has to take place because God's word cannot return to him void. And as we see the power of Jesus here moving, it says he's speaking to his disciples. It's, he's speaking to the church. This is the Christ. This is word that became flesh. This is our real and living God. Is God real? I want my grandies to know this is a real God for really broken people. This is a real God who really got down and dirty with this planet. Because I think it was Mike who said in Sabbath school again, it's about the mind, family. Sin is about the brokenness of our minds. We are broken hearted. And Jesus is speaking to us today because he's the Christ, and he's speaking here to the church. It said he told his disciples. 
He wants the church to know something. He wants the church to see there's an absolute contrast between a real and living God and a really broken world. Amen? Amen. Absolutely. The Christ is always a contrast to this world. And we see he has some characters in this story. He has what? The unjust judge who doesn't what? Care about God. He doesn't fear God. And he doesn't care about humanity. He's unjust and he's uncaring. He has a widow. You know, when I did, I haven't been in the women's prison for two years, two and a half years since the COVID. But prior to that, I was going into the prison in Kailua once a week. And when I would talk to the women, they, I wasn't going in the prison for me to do something for them. Absolutely, the Lord was doing something to me. Because he said in word, word said, you visited me in prison, Michelle. I'm already in prison. I'm with these beloved daughters of God. Learn something from them. And I asked them, why a widow? And do you know what they told me? Because she's lonely and helpless and needy. Amen? So we have the uncaring unjust judge and we have the lonely helpless needy widow and she says grant me justice against my adversary there's an adversary jesus said an enemy has done this the adversary is always there lurking in the shadows and so here are jesus characters but family the contrast is between the christ and the broken-hearted church isn't this me? Isn't this you? I find myself to be the unjust judge and the uncaring judge. I find myself at times to be the lonely, helpless, needy widow. And I find myself up against an adversary. You see, Jesus here is just giving us a picture of the church. It's his church that he loves that he cares for, that he died for. And this is Jesus' word speaking to us so we get a bigger picture of who he is. The contrast is so great. You know, I, uh, about two years ago, I was called for jury duty, and I was not happy. I get called for jury duty almost every three years. And my husband never gets called for jury duty. And it was December. Who gets called for jury duty in December? And so I was grumpy. I went, you know, they say you're supposed to do your duty, right? And I'm all about, okay, I want to be a good citizen and do my duty. I do not want to go to jury duty. And when I went to jury duty, guess what? It went through number 11, and guess what? I said, I'm not going to do jury duty. Thank you, Jesus. And guess who was number 12? Michelle Seibel. And now I was really grumpy. I, fit, I filled chair number 12. You know, you can't get off of jury duty. You have to be dead or have your travel plans in your hand. When, I, when, the, when the defendant or the accused walked into that courtroom, the accused walked in and sat down. We began the case immediately that moment as soon as I sat in jury seat number 12. And the accused sat down, and do you know I looked at him, and do you know what I said in my head? He's guilty. He's guilty. We spent three days there, and it became absolutely evident that this man was not guilty had he done a wrong thing? Was he in the wrong place at the wrong time? But he was not guilty of the charge against him. But the unjust judge, because it's December, because I don't want to sit on jury duty, because I don't want to be there, Lord, he's guilty. Do you understand what I'm trying to share with you, family, today? We are the unjust judges. We are always pointing our finger at others and saying guilty. The lonely, helpless, needy widow. 
she, in this story, she's pretty aggressive. Amen? In the, in, uh, this is the New King James I read of. The King James says, she says, grant me, avenge me of my adversary. Do you know what vengeance is? She is asking for the judge to inflict harm on her adversary. We have to understand what Jesus is trying to say here. Even this widow, even the lonely and the helpless and the needy can rise up and be a threat, right? Absolutely. We can be a threat to each other. We can pray that God will grant us justice in a way that we would see other people hurt instead of healed. And Jesus wants us to see a contrast here. Because family, he's always about the contrast. If he's the Christ, he's about the contrast. What does God think? How is my fallen thinking so different from what God thinks? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what God thinks. Do we think like God? We have to start thinking about what we're thinking. In the church, because it's the Christ. And there's always a contrast, because God wants to show us his glory and his grace. He wants to show us light in the face of Jesus Christ. He wants to give us a bigger picture of who he is because we've lost the connection to who God is. And only in Christ are we reconnected to that creator. And he will do what he has promised, family. He will give us new hearts. He will give us right spirits. He will help us to be more than overcomers. You know what the name Israel means? God contends. To wrestle with God and to be triumphant. That's the name God gave Jacob. That is what God is trying to tell us today. That we can wrestle with God. How do we wrestle with God? In prayer. What did Jacob say to God? I will not let you go until you bless me. But here's the absolute contrast, family. It's God who contends for you and me. It's Christ Jesus himself, whoever lives to make intercession for us. If you and I never pray, Jesus ever lives to pray. If you and I don't know what to say and the Spirit says, we don't know how to pray, but the Spirit groans within us with words that cannot be expressed. God knows what to pray. The whole point is that we connect that you and I come running into the presence of God. And that's why it's remarkable that Jesus says, listen to what the unjust judge says. Is he really asking us to listen to that? No, he's saying there's a contrast between the us unjust judge and the just judge. Isn't there, family? Isn't there an absolute difference between me and the Lord Jesus Christ, between this fallen people in this world and the Lord Jesus Christ, between this planet and the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes, because of his glory and his grace, but he has promised. Right? The mystery of godliness, Christ in us, our hope of glory. You have been saved by grace and not by works. Word has spoken. Word is so, it's very good, this word. Word that became flesh and blood and lived and dwelt among us. That word, family. So Jesus speaks to the church, the brokenhearted church, because sin and self has made us unjust and uncaring, lonely and helpless and needy. That's what sin has done to God's humanity. Praise God for Jesus Christ. 
because he loves the church family. You know, several years ago, many now, we were praying for a nephew in our family. Uncle Michael remembers this. Marcus, he was addicted years and years. He was in prison. He was out of prison. I remember one family night when we went to gather with Grandma Abby, and Marcus was there. And when, right before we said prayer for the food, Marcus raised his hand and he said, can I say something before we pray? And of course, everybody looked at him. Marcus was in the room. And this is what Marcus said. He said, I need to ask your forgiveness from all my family because I've hurt you. Does the Spirit move among us? Amen. Does the Father truly love us? Yes. 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 And there were many tears in that circle because many had been praying. But it was explosion of grace. Amen. Had Marcus ever really done anything to hurt me? I didn't think so. But his act of asking for forgiveness, that, that was the Lord. That was the Holy Spirit exploding. Several years later, we were invited to Marcus' wedding. He had been free from drugs for years. I have to tell you today, Marcus has two little boys. He bought a house. He, worked. he is a functioning lover of God. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But at Marcus' wedding, we were in a small chapel down at um, Sand Island. And I remember there was barely anybody who could fit in this little chapel, if any of you have been down to Kihei and Sand Island. And we were packed in there, but I had to stand at the door, and my sister was standing right here. And the judge, there was a judge in his robes, the judge was marrying them. And my sister whispered to me in my ear, that's the judge that put him in jail. <laughs> and I looked at her, I said, what? And I said to myself, as soon as this wedding is over, I'm making a beeline for that judge. Because I want to talk to that judge. And sure enough, I now pronounce you man and wife. And the wedding party exited. And I saw the judge go off to the side and stand in his robes. And I ran up to him and I said, hello, my name is Michelle Seibel. I'm Marcus's auntie. And you put him in jail. <laughs> And the judge looked at me, and he said, I did. He said, I sentenced him to jail. But I want you to know something. When I get down from that bench, I take off my robes. And I go and I work with these prisoners. And I help them. I want them to be well. That's the just judge. That's the judge of the church of Jesus Christ. That's our real and living God, whoever lives to pray for us, because he knows exactly the broken heart of every human being. And I want to close with this family, because this is explosive. The Christ of the church redeemed. If you turn with me to Ephesians, in your Bibles, you're familiar with this, but I'm going to read it a little differently, because you're going to see something explosive here. This is Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm so sorry. I don't know. These glasses don't have the correct strength. My eyes are so bad, and this hype is so little, but bear with me here. Here's the Lord. This is word. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and his church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be 
holy and without blemish, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. And the two shall become one flesh. Today, as we go to communion, I want to remind you what it cost the Lord for you and me to be one with God again. I want to remind us, family today, that we're not only bought at a great price, the precious blood of Christ, a lamb, but we're brought at a great price into the very presence of glory and grace. You and I have access to the Most High God through the blood of Jesus today. We're not only paid for, but we're prayed for 24-7 jesus christ ever lives to pray for us and as we are reminded as we commune with the lord today family let it be life-changing for this church let nothing go back to the same determine in our hearts to press to jesus press to jesus today because creator is calling us today one correction in your bulletin where it says the Hawaii Conference prayer gathering. It's not April, it's August. August 4, 5, 6. You are invited to Oahu. Now I know everybody's going to say Oahu, but I'm telling you, family, where the lonely and helpless and needy widow could persevere. When we want to do something, we persevere. But we're talking about Christ and the church. Our Father, today we just praise you, Lord. We praise you with all of our hearts for who you are, dear, dear Jesus. Thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Lord, this is your word. Let it not return to you void now. Will you find faith, Lord? That's not a rhetorical question. That question needs to be answered by your church. And we say today, yes, Lord, find your faith. Find your faithfulness reproduced in your people. Not our faith, not a human faith, but a divine, most holy faithfulness of Jesus Christ. That kind of faith, Lord. The credentials of our faith, love, joy, and peace, where we preach Christ in him crucified. It breaks hearts and wins souls, our sister Ellen has said so beautifully. Thank you, Father. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise, Lord, and we want to listen to what you say, our just judge. Thank you for getting down and dirty with us here on planet Earth and helping us to be healed, Lord, for your healing and your wholeness, for your church, your beloved church. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise in the name of our Jesus, Amen and amen. We are praised in the name of Jesus for the gift and the tool of prayer which He revealed to us and for the faith and the words and for the words from the Bible, words and prayer of faith. You need to ask yourself as we are going right now to the communion. We're going to do full worship service to the right. Outside, and we have open your room as well. We would like to encourage all of you to participate. Remember what Jesus, when Jesus asked Peter, and Peter responded, No, you will never touch my feet more. And Jesus responded to him very directly, If you will not have part with me, you will not have part with me even in heaven as well. May the Lord help you to be physically happy and spiritually happy to the food washing experience right now. To the right and to the left, and during this time, we will have children's story. Let's do everything in organized way for the next 10 to 12 minutes. And as you hear the sound of music, all the deacons and deaconesses will come, and we will continue with our service right here in the sanctuary. May God bless you.
confused us upstairs. <laughs>
anybody can pitch, he can catch, and he thought he did it all by himself. But you know what? Someone showed him that he didn't do it by himself, that God helped him. Helped him get to where he was, but because he was so prideful, he ended up getting his elbow thrown out, and he ended up missing the playoffs and the last few games. And you know who that person was? Uncle Ezra. Uncle Ezra was so prideful that he ended up thinking he was Mr. Know-it-all, and he ended up losing, um, not being able to attend the last few games of the season, which were pretty much the most important thing. The whole season, the, the whole senior year. The whole senior year. So he knows what it's like to be prideful. So what we're trying to show you today is to be humble. Be humble. So no matter if you think that you're better than somebody, we, God wants you to um, hold it in. You don't need to show it to someone. If you want to be nice and just kind of humble yourself with that. So tell me some of the things that you can do at school to be humble or to show kindness to each other. Not be so prideful and arrogant. What can you do? Yeah. Let other people answer questions, not yourself. Yeah, so you're not, you're not receiving a lot of the attention. Do you guys know any other reason or another ways? No? Sharing. 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 Act of kindness, being a role model to each other, you know, helping somebody and like say they don't know an answer, helping them with that. Yes, it is. Not to be proud. Not to be proud. You can be proud. You can be proud of somebody. You can congratulate them and thank them. Proud of himself. Oh, oh proud of themselves. Amen. So very good. Yeah. So other things that you can do is to recognize your flaws. Okay? Be grateful and not boastful. Um, admit when you make a mistake. I know a lot of us don't like to admit when we make a mistake, right? Don't brag about it. If you have more toys than somebody else, don't go and brag that you have like ten toys than somebody. God doesn't want us to do that. And be very considerate and appreciate others. Yes, that. Not to hit anybody. Yes. Good job. Yeah, not to punch anybody. Right? So humility is when a person has who has great power, great knowledge, great skills, but is humble and doesn't act like he's a big shot or uses his power to get what he wants. Right? And then did you know that those who possess great power will still be hum well, humble, will always be well, let me try that over. Did you know that those who possess great power, but is still humble, will always be well regarded and valued? Yeah, so God, our Jesus wants us to be very humble and let's hope that we can use these skills in school and even at home by helping your parents and just being, that role model, and um, especially a role model if you have like an older or a younger sister or sibling. Okay? Yeah? I, why am I here as well? If you have a younger sister, you can be a good role model for your sister and provide good acts and help your mom and dad at home take out the trash. Yeah? She has a lot of toys. Yeah, you just want to share your toys, okay? And not be greedy with it. Okay. Anybody want to say prayer? You always what? Very good. That's how we share food with his baby sister. See, that's a good act of kindness. Good job, Seth. And you're not greedy. Yeah. Anybody want to say prayer? Thank you for this wonderful
the Aspen Protection Farm here. We also thank you for Auntie Judy's um, cake and story and that we can learn to be more humble and not be so proud of ourselves. And thank you for all that you do. Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, finally, that is it.
We are praising God for living for us such an amazing example. When He shed His blood, when He gave us His own body, in order for us to have life, to have life with you. Thank you, all of you, participating in this session. Right now, we would like to pray and praise God for these emblems of love. Because you know, what Christ did at the cross of Calvary, it's absolutely reversal toward what the first Adam did at the forbidden tree. Just think about it. What Adam did at the forbidden tree, Jesus reversed at the cross of Calvary to show us what there is a way to redemption. We have an option today, we have a privilege to be washed in his blood and to participate in his body, which represents the standards of love, to give him glory and honor, and to follow his amazing example, and to show this good news to the others in our life and lifestyle as we will pray for the Lord. And right now, I would like for the elders and deacons to kneel with us here and for the whole church, if you will be available, if it will be uh, absolutely possible for you to buy it. So let's do it. We will buy all of you down in the presence of God and pray for the emblems of love and praise Him for the bread of love. Thanks. 
to God. And he showed us an example that if you don't use fragmented Jews, you will not have a clear understanding, a clear mind to be a available source and channel for the Holy Spirit to work in you and be a source for the others in the world and be a good example for the others. This is why we have a clear, unfragmented, great Jews here. We have bread, which is a metal bread, which represents Jesus' body. And right now, as we are going to fast, we would like to all together wait for one another because we are practicing all the communion at the Seventh day Adventist Church for adults and young. We will wait for one another, and at one moment, we will praise God and participate.
received from the Lord. This is what the Apostle Paul is saying. But I also pass it unto you. But the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brought it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank you for your precious blood. Today, your blood has removed everything from my life. Through your blood, I am forgiven. And all of my sins are forgiven. Today, every function of my spiritual or physical body is healed, restored, and renewed. May the name of Jesus special closing prayer as we were going to sing the closing song right after the announcement. Can we pray? How the God of peace keep you from falling and to present you homeless in the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior who is alone is wise. May glory
would like to make an announcement for by the end of our service. We will have two deacons standing by the doors and they will collect free will offering for the needy people in our church. We also would like to remind the whole Christian body here at the church what our lawyer is going to be available on Maui in the month of August. Yes, we are looking for him to be in the month of August and actually in Hawaii. But we hope and we will pray maybe he will visit us on Maui as well. And we also we are also looking forward next week we are going to have baptism in our church. Right here in our Baptist area, Brother Taylor. Tyler would like to get baptized and he will announce to his parents and to the church body here what he would like to be baptized in our church here next week on April 9th. And Jenna and Jim, Auntie Felix, grandchildren, and all of your family will participate in this special event. Here at Wally Park, right after the church service, we would like to invite all of you to join us for the special baptism right in the river of Hill Valley Park, where they would like to have a special baptism for Jim and Jan. We also would like to give thanks to all of you, brother deacons and deaconesses, for your service, for cleaning up the basins and preparing everything at 6 o'clock in the morning right here in our church. Thank you. And I wanted to say thank you to brother Richard, who is bringing us beautiful flowers all the time. And on this Sabbath, especially as well. Thank you. And to Sister Emily, who is decorating these flowers so beautifully. To all our video, our video department, and to Brother and Elder Mikhail Alwal, for sisters who are doing the music. May our hearts will be praised in praise to the Lord who is giving us the breath of life, who is giving us the opportunity. Praise his holy name. Now I'll go to you. The word says that they sang a song. They sang a hymn and went out. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. Oh, uh -huh.